Hey guys, Terrence here again from Neptune Systems with another episode of our Control Freak Wednesday. Brand new thing that we've been doing. We've had uh, two of them so far. We have a third one today. Um, it should be a really interesting show. We've got some great gear to show you. I know all you guys out there are really into the gear. We're going to kind of let it get cooking here and see, uh, see everybody join in, get some of the numbers up before we get to all the good stuff. Um, one of the things I want to mention to all of you is if you have somebody out there that you've seen online uh, that you're like, wow, this guy always does some cool things, he should go on Control Freak Wednesday, then ping me and let me know who they are and I'll try to go uh, encourage them to come on the show and show it what it is that they're doing. Um, as, we know, as, as you guys know, this is on Wednesday every other week. We'll be doing another one of these in two weeks. Um, in uh, next week, we have Let's Talk Reef. That comes in on Tuesdays, uh, every Tuesday at, oh geez, now I'm going to remember the time. Every Tuesday at 3.30, 4.30, 5.30. Every Tuesday, no, every Tuesday at 5. <laughs> I could get this right. At 5, 8 uh, on, the Eastern, on the East Coast. So if you want to see some great stuff, we have some great guests that come on to Let's Talk uh, Reef. We also do a lot of technical stuff on the Apex, so if you want to learn how to do some of the geeky things, Paul comes on and shows us some of that stuff. We show what's going on in the tanks here in the office. Uh, as I said, there, if you want, you can go see some of the, the recorded episodes out on Facebook with some guests that we've had. Pretty amazing stuff. Uh, definitely want to go check that out. You guys are rolling in here now, so if something's going wrong with the streams, I know you guys will let me know, but I do see Facebook and uh, YouTube coming in. We've got Tim Wachowski. Uh, good to see you, Tim. John Del Monte, good to see you again, like always. Got all the regulars are rolling in. I like to see it. Uh, you guys, you know, get out there, share this, right? So we can get more people in here, have more fun, more questions. Uh, we got a great one today. I'm going to bring him in here in a little bit. It's Matt Dudley. He's out of Florida. Uh, so I want you guys to, to obviously push through questions as we're going through things and I'll feed them through to Matt uh, because he has uh, some incredible things to show. He's got so many fish you can't even believe it and so much gear and I think he's tried just about every piece of gear out there there is. So he can talk about what's worked for him, what hasn't worked for him uh, and you know we can have a good time doing that. Probably do 45 minutes to an hour and uh, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Well, hopefully we're going to have a, uh, a good stream. We have a good data, data rate. That's what I'm hoping for. And uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, without uh, much further ado, let me bring in Matt Dudley. Hey, Matt, how's it going? I just lost you for a minute there. You did. Well, I guess it reconnected. So we're good to go. I don't know if there's internet connection issues or not, but we'll live through them. Don't worry about that. So how are things out there in Florida, Matt? Doing great. Nice and hot. Nice and hot. Where, where exactly in Florida are you, Matt? Uh, South Florida, uh, Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale area. And uh, you, lived through the, you lived through the hurricane, so we don't have to talk much about that. Yep. that, that that's good. Lots of, uh, lots of gas on storage and backup generators. Yeah, you know it, huh? Well, we got a little worried when we were down there in uh, Orlando this year at MACNA. That was quite a thing. Definitely uh, had some concerns. So, uh, Florida, you were you involved in the MACNA down there in Florida? I was. I had a booth there uh, at MACNA. What did you do? Um, I had a booth uh, I shared with uh, Fauna Marin, and I provided the corals uh, for their booth. Cool. That was a great show, huh? Yeah, it was a great show. Unfortunately, the hurricane kind of cut it short for a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, the, 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 the show we had down, what was it, uh, I guess five years ago, six years ago, down in Miami? There we go, yeah. That was Our a dad, show. FMAS. FMAS hosted that. Yeah, that was a show. That was an amazing show. Um, probably the best MACNA that I've, that I've ever been to, that I've ever been involved with so far. I've been involved in about eight of them, I think. And I uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, I kind of miss the club thing, you know, taking care of the MACNA thing. I mean, we've had some good experiences and we've had some mediocre experiences. That one was a great experience. Uh, yeah, we tried our we tried our best to do uh, things, you know, to get, get you know take it off without a hook, a was hitch there. And spectacular, man! Spectacular. Okay, so let's let's talk about you. So, how long you been in the hobby? Um, since I was a little kid. Uh, first thing I did when I was a little kid is 
bought my mother a uh, ten gallon tank for uh, her Mother's Day present. Ah, that's so cute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, it was for myself. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how old were you? Um, I think I was about seven. Oh my seven goodness! And 10, somewhere around there. That's so cute. So you graduated out of that, I'm sure. And then, uh, how long have you been in the saltwater world? Um, we trained, we transferred that over to saltwater about a year after uh, we had it and tried to do things there. But I was in the Midwest, so there wasn't a lot happening around where I was. So it was definitely hard. Um, got away from it, and then came back to it, you know, right after college. Right. Right. Okay, so what's been your progression of tanks, just like real quickly, as far as sizes um, of tanks? I had two 300-gallon tanks, and then I moved into the uh, ATM 540 that I have now. Um, and the progression is always, it's always been salt water. Yeah, always reef, right? No inserts. Always always. Uh, this tank here, this 540, um, and the two 300s before it were all uh, fish-only systems. Mm -hmm. And then about six years ago, I transferred this one over to... Uh, being a reef system. Oh, okay. okay. Um, it was a little bit of a chore because I had to. I had tons and tons of fish, as I do now, but they were bigger fish and more uh, on the collector angel side of things and uh, uh, a couple aggressive fish uh, setups. But uh, mainly it was tough getting it over into a reef setup because I went with a fish setup uh, to begin with, getting all the phosphates out, getting everything Copper. back in for coral. Um, so it took a little bit of a uh, little bit of a chore to do that. Did you have copper in there as well? No, no, I didn't have. I, I never used uh, copper in, in the systems at all. Oh, that's um, good. But I had to get the phosphates leached out. The phosphates were off the charts uh, because fish didn't care about the phosphates, and it was a fish-only system uh, for about a year and a half. Um, and then I started slowly transitioning it over to a reef. Um, now it's just basically SPS dominated. It's, uh, it's one of those things where, you know, many people when they're getting into the hobby, they see all the incredible fish that you can have when you're not a reef, right? And some of them exactly. are, are spectacular. Some of these angel fish and uh, trigger fish and the, a lot of these different uh, animals that you can have that you can't have in a reef. And it's so attractive. And I know when you talk to, you know, quasi non hobbyists my wife is a hobbyist because she has an aquarium in her house, but she doesn't know all of what can go with what. And so you're always going around like, oh, let's get that fish. Like, yeah, I can't have it. No, let's get this and one. It's so beautiful. Yeah, I can't have that, that one either. That's how it was. And then all the guys from the club would come over and love the fish, but then give me a hard time that I couldn't, you know, <laughs> keep corals. So the challenges were kind of laid down. And then I slowly moved into a few corals with the help of a couple friends and then started learning more and more on the coral side. And then I used to give them a hard time. All they wanted to do was uh, collect colorful sticks. And right. then that kind of took over. And then that's all I've been doing since then. So, yeah. Do you know who on Facebook is Cuban Reefer? Yeah. Yeah? Who's that? Uh, that's Eddie. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So Eddie's, Eddie said, yeah, he didn't like sticks before. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah, I used to uh, give them a hard time because that's all they could keep, and they couldn't keep fish alive. <laughs> that's really good. That's really funny. So Apex stuff, you know, you've been an Apex guy for a while? I've had an Apex the whole time. Never anything different to control the systems. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. And uh, obviously you have the, the latest Apex, right? The, yes. The one that we yes. came out with a couple of years ago. Cool. All right. So, I mean, let's just let's start with a tour of what the stuff is most people see when they see in your house, which is your gorgeous reef and fish and everything. And you give everybody else a tour and I'll try not to interrupt. How about that? All right. Um, let me flip the camera around here. Um, okay. And I'm going to try and dim down these lights a little bit. Uh, let's see if we can... Cuban, Cuban Reefer says it's Javier, not Eddie. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I have another friend. That, uh, um, you can see the system here from the front. Oh, it's beautiful, man. Before wow, look at all those fish. Uh, How many powder blues do you have there? Um, I just have one large powder blue here. Uh -huh. um, I have one powder blue. Um, there's over 100 fish there. Um, let me see if I can get some of them to come out here. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can reach up in here. And we'll put some food in there. Let's see if we can get some of them to come out here. Oh, you have a number of genocanthus too. Oh yeah. I have the, uh, semifasciatus. 
I have uh, the mast. Uh, I have ten pair of uh, dwarf angels. Wow. There's ten. Ye- there's ten yellow tangs. There's sixty-seven uh, antheus. Uh, wow. File, uh, tasseled filefish. Uh, about forty different wrasses. Um, obviously, the powder blue down there. So, uh, what kind of wrasses? Name name off some of the wrasses that you think are the, the uh, coolest wrasses like you have. I like the tamarind wrasses and I like the leopard wrasses. Um, I've gotten into the pintail wrasses lately. Um, I have uh, ten pintail wrasses now. Wow. Um, I have five uh, yellow tails, uh, five red tail tamarind wrasses. Um, Those tamarinds are really cool looking fish. Uh, those are pretty much my favorite, the red tail tamarinds. I uh-huh. have five of them, and I've I've had them. Uh, let's see if we can get a picture. Of, so uh, now, yeah. what things do they there. eat that they're not supposed to? Uh, they don't mess with anything on the reef. Um, not no. a, not a thing. But what about like hungry. snails? Um, they don't. I feed so heavily uh, that they don't really mess with any of the snails or anything. Um, I did about two years ago had some aptasia I wanted to get rid of, so I threw uh, some peppermint shrimps in. They went right for them, and they look like a dog uh, carrying a bone around. Wow! Turn that camera sideways. Yep, there we go. Now we're cooking. There we go. Now everybody's like, "Wow! Look at all the fish! Holy hell! That's a lot of fish! What a dream tank!" Somebody said. No yeah, there's doubt. A, there's over a hundred different fish in there, and. Uh, they all get along great. Um, the powder blue every once in a while does give the uh, copper band. Here's the copper band over here. Uh-huh. Um, that's, does give him a hard time every once in a while, but just kind of shoes him away for some reason. I don't know why the copper band, but nobody else. There's uh, enough yellow tangs there that it kind of drives him crazy, so he doesn't mess with them. Look at all those antheas. So now the schools of antheas, do they have just one male in the school? No, there's uh, about four ma- There's four four males, four big males right now. Um, I thought they would only keep one, but they all get along, and there's so much room for them. Uh, they don't really mess with each other at all. Um, <laughs> they're constantly spawning every night. You can see them at the top, you know, and diving down at, it, at the females. Right, right. Yeah, I, I mean, I have a very tiny little harem of the, you know, the orange antheus in, in my tank and uh, with the one big red one. And they do the same kind of thing. It's really cool to, to have happen. I've got Tim Wachowski on here asking the question you're never supposed to ask. How much money invested in that system with fish? And then somebody else, Trent, says, Tim, spouses may be watching. My thing, <laughs> no, my thing I, is, I, is that if you have to ask. Fortunately <laughs> for me, my spouse has been on board and been you know, awesome with everything I've done. Um, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, if you're looking at total cost, I really have never sat down and looked at it like that. I have uh, between, uh, we'll go back in the back in a minute. You don't have to three. tell him, man. You don't have to tell him. It's okay. Well, I was just going to say, I was just going to say there's 18 radions, so you could There you go. Out. You can do the math on that for sure. No doubt. And uh, what about the SPS? You got any of those goofy, you know, super expensive ones that everybody complains about, but they still want? Um, I do have, uh, in the frag systems, I have, that's where a majority of them are. Okay. I do have, uh, Acrolandia, um, which is getting good size right now. Um, a lot of the different named ones, uh, there's probably 200 frags in the frag system. So, uh, or, or more, probably more, um, a little bit hard to name them all. Okay. And, uh, I don't, like I said, uh, Acrolandia is probably my favorite. So, Here's, you know, here's a goal for you. I don't see an Achilles Tang in there. No, I don't. I don't have an Achilles. Um, I thought he would have problems with the powder blue. So. Well, guess what? And I have a... blue has been spotless since day one uh, after quarantining, and he's spectacular, so I didn't want to mess with it. You don't know how much we're alike in that regard. I have a, a powder blue that's about eight inches long and uh, gorgeous fish, right? And same thing, um, you know, people are like, well, hey, there's this great uh, uh, Achilles down at Neptune Aquatics. He's had it for a couple of months. You should get it. I'm like, I'm not messing with that equation. <laughs> I love that fish too much. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. The, it, I'm not messing with the equation because when I put the 10 yellow tangs in, even though I think I'm down to seven on them after a couple of years now, um, I can only count seven at any, at any one given time. Be my luck, there's probably one somewhere in the back at the time, but I think I have seven now. That's all I can count at one in one given time. Right. 
Okay, here's a question for you. Sean SP says, how many pounds of live rock do you have in there? I started out with 1,500 pounds of live rock because I moved over the live rock from my old 300 gallon and put it in the sump uh, to see this tank slowly when I was transitioning things over. And in the system right now, there's uh, about 600 in the display tank. And then slowly as time went on, I started taking things out of the sump. Um, so I started out with about 1,500 pounds. Now I'm down to about 600. I wanted more room for corals here in the system. Cody wants to know, what are the dimensions of the tank? The tank is 96 by 36 by 36. Great. Yeah. Uh, when you walk in my house, it's the first eight foot of the wall. And I've been redoing things. There actually used to be a hallway here in, on this part of the house in front of this system. Um, and I just opened that up uh, about a year ago. And I've been working on uh, redoing a lot of different things in this side of the house to open up so you could have access to see full uh, full frontal of the system here. Awesome, man. All right, let me see if there's any other questions from the front, and then we will uh, we'll have you walk us around and see the, the business end of this thing, because I know people are really waiting to see that. Sure. We got, by the way, we got 82 people on this live stream, man, so it's, it's cooking. We got a lot of people want to see this stuff. Uh, okay, here's another question. Phosphates and nitrates, where are they? Uh, phosphates are zero. Nitrates, I'm struggling to keep them at two. I've been dosing uh, the uh, me, uh, me coral NO3, and I've been dosing about 200 milliliters a day just to keep it at two. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I, have a bio, I have a biodenitrator. Um, well, we're going to talk about that. Let's, let's hold that until you go back there, okay? Because I'm, okay. I'm going to ha have some questions for you on that. So why don't you start to walk around to the business end? Sure. And give us a tour of that. This is uh, the fish room here, obviously, behind it. Okay. You can see the lighting up there. There's uh, eight radions. There's uh, eight 48-inch T5s, four 48-inch uh, reef brights on the main system there. Uh, the system's powered by three uh, Red Dragon uh, DC-230s. Um, there's the frag system over there. It has eight radions on it and two 72-inch reef brights on it. And it's plumbed in, right, to the same, they're all the they're same all system. They're all plumbed together. There's a four-foot uh, frag tank down there at the end, and it's all plumbed together. So one of the DC-230 pumps goes around and comes in over here for the frag system. And then this leads over into the small four-foot frag system, and then that comes back down and around into the sump and it's a 300 gallon sump it's down below there i'm not sure how wow. good the lighting is it's okay below. we can see it uh, bubble king super marin 300 uh skimmer there and other than the skimmer and the gfo and uh carbon the denitrator is the only other thing that uh i've been using i have a uh, 30 gallon uh, bio denitrator this is who uh, makes your who makes the, the your uh, denitrator? I made the denitrator myself. It's a bio denitrator, and I feed it methanol, racing fuel, a 50-50 uh, ROD RODI mixture. Wow, that's crazy, man. I, I use the denitrator too, but I use the one with the little pellets in it, and you know, sulfur denitrator, and that thing works awesome, man. So I can't imagine you know one that big running methanol. This, it, it takes uh, 26 milliliters of uh, methanol a day. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Um, so I get it in a five-gallon uh, can, 50-50 split to two Home Depot buckets, and it lasts almost a year. So it looks like About on your wall there. a year for this system to control nitrates. How much? About $40. Wow, so cheap. Wow, that's crazy. I see you got all the power supplies for your radions up there. You got a couple of 832s, a couple of EB8s. Looks like you've got a Desteco there, calcium reactor. Um, I do. I have the uh, EXT4 uh, calcium reactor there from Destaco. And it's Desta all, you say Destaco, I say Destaco, Desta tomato, tomato. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to have to ask him how to actually pronounce it. <laughs> yes, it's kind of like tunes, you know? It's all the different ways the, people... Uh, this, the flow on all the systems is uh, the important thing for the uh, uh, 
SPS, this frag tank, you can see um, there's four of the uh, wave pumps, which I'm in love with since I just put those in uh, a few weeks ago. There's four of them on this system. That's crazy. Um, How many gallons is in that frag tank? Uh, about 120, about 120 gallons, 150. And you've got four waves in there. There's four, there's four wave pumps in there. Um, the system itself, you can see up there, uh -huh. there's uh, six MP60s and uh, four wave pumps in the main system. Wow. Wow, that's the, crazy. Uh, one of the MP60s is uh, off of it right now. I'm putting an extension on it because I used to have them mounted on the back of the system over here, uh -huh. one on two there, and I had two on each end. And I moved them and now hooked up so that I could have four of the wave pumps uh, flowing right off of the overflow in the back. Very cool. I love the simplicity of them. Yeah, so in the frag tank, what's funny is if you, if you were to run all four of those at 100%, that would be 160 times turnover. It's, you know, um, when you look, at the, you look at the tank, I'm probably just getting towards, if you look at like a, a BRS recommendation for flow, yeah. they're saying, if you look at that uh, video on their 52 weeks of reefing, they recommend a uh, 100 times tank uh, turnover. Right. So, I'm getting close to that with the uh, six MP60s and the four waves on the main tank. Yeah, that's that's hard to get to. I run six uh, waves on my 425, so that's uh, 24,000. So yeah, that's only about 50 times turnover or something like that. So it's 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 important, huh? You you do you believe the flow is probably like the most important thing? I believe flow is, you know, I do have a lot of extensive lighting, but I do believe that flow is the the main thing. Let me see if I can turn it all off here. We can see uh, as some of the some of the flow starts to die down here. Obviously, I don't have a filter on the phone, so it's lighting's not going to let you with this camera see every frag. Sure. So the um you know, with the uh, with the flow, my kind of my rule on that is when you think you've just you have almost too much flow in the tank, turn it up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when you think you uh, when you think that you know uh, you don't have you know oh my goodness these guys just aren't going to like this especially with SPF uh, SPS you just want to crank it up. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, I mean, it, with the SPS corals, as long as it's not blasting right into one, and even some of the corals don't mind that. Um, you can you can have. Uh, three times the flow that you think you can or should have, and those corals are going to love you for it. Um, it. Let me see if I can give you a view of the sump down here. You can see... Uh... So, so, uh, so, Matt, let me ask you a couple of questions. So, sure. so, clearly you've gone through lots of different equipment. I know you've talked about all sorts of gear. And uh, uh, every reef keeper has lessons learned, right? You didn't, you didn't start here with this, right? So what's some of the progression that you've had on this tank where you've had lessons learned or you've changed out equipment or, or moved on to do something differently? Give us a few ideas of that. One of the main things I would say for your system is if you're going to do a reef and you have fish only, keep track of your nutrients and don't just disregard them because it is a nightmare trying to get them out of the system once they've built up and seeded themselves into the system. Uh, I used lanthanum chloride and it took me months of, uh, you know, dripping it on the weekends because uh, the sock, you know, obviously you don't want the stuff yeah. in your system. So I drip it in a sock for about eight hours and keep rinsing out the socks every time they'd be uh, uh, full and it just kept taking forever and forever. Finally, I got rid of all of it. Um, and it quit leaching out, um, it plateaued out, and then finally I was able to get it down to where I wanted it. Um, I do run in this system uh, dual GFO reactors. Um, that I found that the acros like to have a, a nice balance. They don't like it when things start to clog up and it's about a month into running it. They've gotten used to eating a little bit more food because your phosphates start to rise. Then you change it and you slam it down low. And then all of a sudden, you know, now they're back to relearning a new pattern for their right. feeding. So I change every other uh, every other month. I change the opposite one. So you always have a fresh one um, that's sitting there, you know, as the other one's wearing down. 
That's a great tip for people running the, you know, the, I don't run GFO myself, I run a huge uh, macro bed um, in, in the sump, but uh, definitely if you're a GFO person, I think well, that makes a ton of sense because stability is really key in everything in a reef. Um, letting, letting the corals and the fish too, um, you know, not have to be adjusting all the time because when, a, when an organism is adjusting, it's not doing its normal thing that it would be doing, right? Um, and, exactly. And so with a coral, it's adjusting to, uh, you know, if it's a, a temperature change or a nutrient change or any of those things, it's, it's just constantly adapting and not growing to its fullest. So uh, that's a great idea of running two of them and then kind of flip-flopping them at the, at the halfway mark, no doubt. That's, that's exactly what I did because I wanted it to stay at a baseline zero and then I could just add back what I wanted for nutrients, um, okay. obviously with heavy fish loads. One of the things I would also recommend for people that are working on you know, going to SPS and if they're wanting to grow them, I would definitely recommend feed your fish. Don't skimp on your filtration trying to compensate for keeping your fish, uh, you know, not fed healthy and feeding every other day or every three days. Um, that's the most ridiculous thing. Your fish feed your corals. Yeah, this is a very good point. And one of the ones, um, you, you know, I often make to people is you, you, when you throw food in for the fish, it's not like the food, the food goes in and it disappears. <laughs> it's got to come out. <laughs> And, right. and when it comes out, it, it, it's now in a way that the corals can uptake it, including, I mean, fish, you know, also have urine as well as, you know, the solid waste that they have. And all of those basically nutrients go as food for the corals. Hey, okay, so another question. Um, uh, what about your water changes and your water change system and that kind of stuff? What do you do for that? You brought up a, uh, a good point. Um, this system hasn't had a water change on it, a traditional water change, in uh, coming up on almost almost six years now since I switched over. No um, way. To, you know, nope. Uh, the only thing that I do right now is when I go to the shows, it is getting about, I would say, 10% a year because when I go to the shows, obviously, I have to put back in the displacement because I take my own water right. um, to the shows. So it is getting a little bit like that. I forgot to mention when we were on the backside, there's 150 pounds of Miracle Mud um, that is in the sump um, okay. from, from Lingsai. Um, I, uh, you know, I love the Miracle Mud. It's done its job. Um, I do send things out for Triton tests. Um, the last Triton test I got back, everything was in the green. Um, it's always been in the green, a little bit low on a couple of elements, um, and I have bumped those up a little bit um, when I see them, uh, but nothing alarming, so everything in the green. Potassium was a little bit low, um, so I bumped that up, and iodine was a little low, so I do bump those two up. Okay, so there's really, th there's really these two kind of philosophies. Uh, most people's philosophy is a lot of small water changes to help keep their system balanced, keep uh, trace elements uh, coming into the system, uh, pull out nutrients, et cetera. And then there are people clear on the other end of the spectrum, which is what it looks like I'm hearing from you, which is I don't, I don't do water changes. Instead, I pull the nutrients out through a different method and I supplement the trace elements a different way, right? Exactly. And that's, that's all I'm doing. If, uh, if it needed to have water changes, I'm not against them. I would do them. It just seems to work uh, the way I've been doing things, so I haven't changed it. Sure. So you rely a lot on ICP then? Um, I really don't rely on. I really don't rely on it. I rely on how the corals are looking. And so far, for you know everything I've been through, um, I've had my bouts with algae. Um, I have had uh, you know some issues with that before. Um, it seems like you know the minute you go on a vacation. Uh, everything's stable for 11 months and one week and you leave for three weeks, two days after you leave, there's an issue. <laughs> okay. Um, I just went through that this last uh, summer. Um, I do have a Trident on the system now. Let me tell you, love the Trident. You do? Um, I do have a GHL also. Okay, so, if, so if you have the better. Trident, okay, go over to your Apex dashboard. Let's see what, the, let's see what those graphs look like on the dashboard. <laughs> Look at this. That is some stability right there, baby. Look at that. Now, it does show the uh, alkalinity uh, up a little bit, down a little bit, but that's only two tenths. That's a difference of going to 8.8 uh, .8 to 8.65. 
So one point five difference. So it may look like uh, that it has a little bit of jumping up and down there, but that's only you know. 0. Yeah, the, the graph scales. So the graph scales to uh, to for the space that's there. So that it, it could right. be a very small amount. Um, obviously, you could you, on a computer you can put your cursor over it, or you can go to the rest of the graph. But that's uh, that's looking pretty good. You keep your alkalinity there, right in the mid eight to nine, usually. I try and keep it. Uh, I try and I try and keep it a little bit lower. I love it a little bit lower, but this uh, calcium reactor over here is a beast. And right. And I put it online um, about a year ago. And when I put it online, it took my alkalinity from, I like to give it about 8.2, and it took it all the way up. I had to toggle it, basically, um, by toggling it on a few hours every day. Right. And it just, its lowest setting raised my alkalinity um, with all the acros I have. It raised the alkalinity all the way up to 10 before it finally stopped on things. Right. Um, and then, then, it, then it's taken a year just to come down to 8.8, eight, 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 8.6. Okay. Uh, I'm a firm reliever of Kalkwasser, but I've not been able to add it back in for the last year. All right. Well, why don't you put yourself back on the screen here for a little bit so while we're asking some questions and stuff, we can see you. How's that? All um, right. That'll work. And uh, let's see here. Javier, man, he keeps kind of, here in Florida, we take it to the next level. <laughs> David Trong says, that's a lot of energy bar. Yeah. Uh... Somebody asked there's what the eight, how much flow eight, flow rate you have in the main system, right? So the six, uh, eight, six, six, four waves and then uh, two of the DC two thirty pumps. Two DC two thirties, four of the MP sixties, and four waves, right? No, six uh, six MP sixties and four waves. Wow. So uh, Joe Joe Villa Vicencio says uh, nice wire management. I know when we spoke like three or four weeks ago, it didn't look like that. So no, it didn't look like that. I uh, when I I, have, I was running the uh, Apex Classic, and when I shifted over to the Trident, obviously I had to upgrade. So when I upgraded, I decided okay, I'd had I had done a uh, basically half-assed job of getting that wire management done. So this time I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to rip it all apart, and it's coming all out. And when it goes back in, it, it's going to be perfectly the way I visioned it, you know, when I started this. It took about 80 hours. Wow. 80 hours. That's why mine looks like a mess. <laughs> um, I came home, like, every day. Uh, I came home, and from about 3 o'clock to midnight every day, and then a couple weekends, and... I just didn't stop because if I knew if I stopped, it wouldn't get done. It looks great, man. It really does. Uh, Javier says uh, you guys are having a frag swap this weekend for the FMAS club, um, and uh, people can come down to that this weekend. We donated something. Thank you for the thank you um, for donating. And uh, pump maintenance. Somebody asked, David Trong said, what's your pump maintenance like? Uh, pump maintenance with these uh, the waves, I love it because I can just take them off with a use a five gallon bu uh, five gallon bucket and some citric acid. Um, and one tip I will give everybody that'll make your life ten times easier. I bought the extension cable for when we we're talking about wire management. I bought the extension cable for the wave pumps so I can just unplug them and then I have a spare uh, socket in the EB8. I can just plug one in and not have to undo any of the wires. Right. Um, each one has an extension on it, so I just take the pump right over to uh, a, by the control board, plug it in, and put it in a five-gallon bucket, let it run for an hour, put it right back in. It's worked great. Well, most people uh, aren't, don't have a crazy reef like you, so with the 15-foot cables, I think most people are going to be fine. <laughs> You've got the big old reef. I know in mine what I do. Maybe that would be a tip for you guys to come out with maybe like a three-foot cable. Maybe, yeah. I mean, on, on, on my reef with the six that I have, I basically take, uh, I have enough slack on, it's an eight-foot tank too, but I have the, I have the shelf around my, you know, uh, tank, and so I take one of those one-gallon BRS uh, jugs or whatever and fill it with the citric acid, and I just take it out of the tank and drop it right in, and uh, it makes it super easy as well. So they're definitely, I, I, I you know, I've, I've, I talked to a customer uh, yesterday who was, uh, having an issue, they had dropped one of the impellers and broken it. And I'm like, dude, you don't really need to take the impellers out. Uh, if you put those things in citric acid every, uh, you know, couple of months and just let them run, it's it's going to clean the pump out for the most part. Uh, maybe once a year, or once every 18 months, you can take them apart if you want to. 
Yeah, you had gave me that uh, that tip on, you know, just run them in a bucket with citric acid, and it worked perfect. Yeah. And I, I couldn't be more happy with that. Um, about every six months, I do take the uh, the DC-230s one at a time. I'll take one out, and uh, I'll clean it all out inside and, and outside and try and get everything, you know, mm -hmm. off of it with a little pump maintenance on it. Um, it's a Bubble King skimmer. I'll do the same with it. About every three months, I'll take the pumps apart there, and I'll pull the skimmer all the way out and clean it all out. Um, but pump maintenance, it's been a breeze. MP60s, I kind of do the same thing with mm -hmm. them. Pull them out uh, right in citric acid. Yep. Yep, they're easy too. Uh, what salt are you using, somebody asked? Um, the salt, when I replenish things just for the frag swaps, I've been using uh, Instant Ocean. Instant Ocean. Just keep the Instant Ocean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody Nothing was stuff. asking... I like it, uh, so I can bump the numbers to where I want them. A couple of questions that we have here are about the Miracle Mud. And I know there's a lot of controversy around Miracle Mud over the years there have been. Um, one question is somebody asked, doesn't, doesn't it raise your PO4, your phosphates, right? Um, and another person asked, um, you know, how does this, how does this muck, how does it, how does it work? Basically, it's melting away and it's leaching into your system, uh, the different trace elements that you'd want to be in your system. And it never did raise my PO4 on there, but that would be hard to tell. Um, if there was a you know a, a long term effect, if PO4 had went up, because I always have ran the uh, GFO, so it's kind of hard to say exactly where PO4 comes from. I'm sure there's many different areas that it comes from, mm -hmm. um, but it hasn't really had anything but a positive effect for me. And I haven't done any of the water changes like uh, normal, you would say. And every time I send the trait and stuff in, everything comes right back within a range of acceptable numbers for myself. Um, and I don't chase numbers. Um, pH, you know, fluctuates in the, you know, high sevens and the eights mm -hmm. and low eights. Um, it does fluctuate a little bit. Um, when I was running Kalkwasser, I was able to get it to where it wouldn't fluctuate and even budge. Um, but for the last year with the calcium reactor I have, I haven't been able to uh, put the Kalkwasser uh, back online. So pH is budging a little bit up and down, uh, not much at all. Um, I don't really even kind of look at it every once in a so, while, I will. But you know, regarding the pH, though, one of the questions um, I have, too, is if you're using the Destaco, Destaco, right, those yeah. traditionally have a super low pH level in them compared to other calcium reactors because they use the the really hard media, the marble media that they use in them? I, it's the Procal media, which is, only, I, I chose to use the Procal, which was only alkalinity and calcium, not magnesium mm -hmm. also. Um, I figured it'd be easier for me to manipulate the magnesium and not even have to worry about it. Um, and I wasn't worried about trace elements because uh, that's always right. been... But what about the pH level of the effluent? That doesn't uh, unnecessarily drop the pH in your tank? It could. I'm sure it could possibly have an effect on a smaller system, but this system, the volume of it, it's almost 1,200 gallons, you know, total with everything. So it really, it, it hasn't had, in the last year, I haven't had any effect other than um, it just being fluctuating a little bit. It stays, you know, um, in the low eights and, uh, you know, barely down into the sevens. Uh, somebody said, ask Matt if he can show, uh, show his showtime setting with the radions and a, and a gel no. feature. Um, what I, what I did do is I set up a feature, um, that, uh, that I liked with the, uh, Apex and I set up a feature so that I could turn and change lights, change pumps, all kinds of setting with, uh, with Alexa and I just basically, there, it just heard me. <laughs> <laughs> What it'll do is uh, if you set up the right profiles for it and then you set up a switch, a virtual switch, a virtual outlet for it, you can basically then change uh, lighting settings uh, just with a voice. Um, Alexa, tell Apex Fusion to turn on Showtime. I'm switching Showtime to on. Ratings help me get better at recommending skills. <laughs> do you want to rate Apex Fusion? No, thank you. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's great. We love seeing that. Joe, actually the developer who did uh, the work on uh, the Alexa stuff, is on the, the, is on the broadcast right now. Um, he just kind of checked in and said, hola. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe likes to see people using the Alexa stuff for sure. 
Um, I use it uh, when I, mainly I like it with uh, the frag system. If you're taking pictures of corals, mm -hmm. I can shut off flow uh, on all the pumps. I can then change certain lighting with the radions. I can have a 10% blue, uh, a 15%. I can just set all the different profiles I want. So whatever colors you're getting, you can really balance them out and just change them. You, your hands are, you know, don't even have to leave the camera or even move from where you're at. Everybody's well, and the emergency the emergency thing is great too because you can say, you know, Alexa tell Apex Fusion to turn everything off and have a basically a uh, you know a command more or less that everything is shut off based on that virtual outlet. I did. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about, and I used to. We'll walk around back around over here, and you'll see uh, right over. Let's see if I can angle the camera right here. Let's see. You can see the breakout box there with the doorbell. <laughs> uh -huh. I used to have it uh, set up like this with the doorbell. You could just set up uh, simple doorbell switches and you know command them to do different things. Um, but then what I did was I decided, well, that's uh, you know silly to even have to walk over and push this button or that button or think about it in an emergency. Uh, you know, I just want to be able to just tell it what I want it to do. Um, Thank goodness I've never had to use it, but I do have them set up for voice. Excellent. Excellent. Joe actually says, hopefully later you'll give Ale our Alexa skill a five-star rating. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard, actually heard Alexa ask me for that. That's something new. Joe's probably messing with things in the background back there. <laughs> we don't even know about it. Um, uh, Lulio says uh, his Alexa was responding. Um, <laughs> Jeff Stevenson, uh, the guy who lost in the speed round, I'm just teasing Jeff. <laughs> he says, uh, where well, you had a question here, uh, using powdered citric acid and mixing it yourself or buying a liquid? Yes. Yes. The, the BRS. BRS citric acid. Also, you can go and get like uh, big bags of it. I think on Amazon too. Um, yeah, it, it made life so much easier with, uh, you know, cleaning those pumps. That's for sure. I was just scrubbing them, and I'm telling you, the citric acid made it uh, 10 times easier. So uh, let's see here. Oh, somebody wants to know how bad the energy bill is that FPL must love you. Um, my energy bill, believe it or not, does not run that bad. I'm in South Florida, so the AC's on. Uh, the system does have a chiller, but the chiller comes on maybe once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. um, just me testing it. Um, this room, I'll walk back in here. Um, and you can see it up here. It does have a uh, two-ton uh, dedicated uh, mini split unit that runs in mm -hmm. this room, in the fish room. Um, so you can see it there, and it keeps this climate controlled in here at 76. The system usually runs uh, 75. Usually it runs a little bit cooler than you know the AC, but who knows what if it's an exact number. Um, but it usually runs 73 to 75. It'll get down at night to 73. Um, and then it'll start working its way back up um, throughout still, the day. Still, how many radions do you have? Uh, well, there's eight up there. And let me flip the camera back around here. There's a one, the one on the end's off at the moment because there's no corals under it, but there's eight underneath there. Right. And then there's two that I run over at the uh, smaller frag system. And then I pull them off and take them with me to the shows in which we have a show this weekend. I've already taken them two down over there. So uh, essentially you have about 16 of them that are running at any one time. And you're running yeah. probably, what, about an 8 to 10 hour light cycle? No. Uh, lights come on at, seven in, at 17 hours. The lights come on at 7 in the morning and go off at midnight. Uh, the blue, uh, there are uh, 8 of the 48-inch uh, T5 uh, Blue Plus. And those come on uh, along with the reef brights at 7 a.m. And then about 9 a.m., the radions start ramping up. And there's a five-hour period where the radions are running at 85%. And then okay. after that five-hour period, they ramp back down. So my power bill averages in the, sun, in the uh, winter months, the cooler months here, in the 300s. Um, and in the summer months, it can get up towards the, five, you know, towards the 500 mark. That's not bad. I mean, so you know, it's considering not too bad what all I'm Look, doing here. And it doesn't matter who I'm talking to on one of these things or online or what have you. If they tell me what their power bill is, I always am going to say, "Wow, that's not bad," because mine is ridiculous. So there's <laughs> you're in California. Probably only Hawaii is going to be worse than 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 my power bill. So. <laughs> 
I, I, yeah, I, a, jealous for sure. That, one thing that I, I will tell you that will will cut down on your power bill is using some cheap Walmart fans. Okay, so people are asking it to, to put the Fritz cameras in front of your your camera and see if that looks better. Here, let me uh, try that. Uh, let's see here. There you go. Okay, I now look at some corals because they want to see corals. Uh, blue lights aren't all on at the moment. Well, that's better right now than it was with these with yeah, with the better than it was. Oh yeah, this is looking more natural. Uh, call out to Fritz and, uh, you know, and Tom. Tom is our uh, East Coast sales manager. He's on here. He said uh, to put the Fritz glasses on. So shout out to Tom. Good good call, man. <laughs> yeah, look at all those frags. Man, I'm going to have to come raid your system, I think. I think that's what it's going to be. Come by. Come by. <laughs> we'll see you. You'll have to make here, a trip uh, to Florida we'll the for sure. On. We'll see what, the, uh, what things look like uh, here in the front side. It'll probably give it a more of a light. There you go. Thank you, Javier, for the shout out to me, you know, on uh, the live streams. I appreciate that. Yeah, the corals look a little bit better here now in this. The, um, you run carbon on your system? I do. I do run carbon. Okay. Um, um, I can't say that it's a plus or a minus. Uh, to me, it's just been like a safety. I'm always scared that my wife's going to spray some aerosol in the house or right. somebody's going to spill something around the system. Uh, obviously, since I have so much time into it and uh, it's all SPS, uh, a little bit more delicate. You know, I guess if I was growing zoanthids the whole time, I really wouldn't worry about it too much. But, right. Uh, I, I do. Uh, uh, I do grow. Uh, you know, the a little bit more sensitive stuff. So. It's running, uh, you know, 24/7 with the carbon, and I change it out once a month. Okay, one uh, one fish you can take with you. The whole tank's got to come down. You got to give everything away. What's the fish you take with you? Uh, the five red-tailed tamarind wrasses. I said one fish, so one red-tailed uh, tamarind wrasse. Um, uh, if I could only take one, I'd probably take, uh, you know, the largest one of them. So, um, for people out there that don't know, and one of them is myself, what is, if they go to the, the local fish store, can they find one of those fish? And if so, what's it going to cost them? They are pretty inexpensive, and uh, you can find them from time to time. They're a little bit hit or miss to try and find. Um, the key to them is feeding them. Um, they need a meaty food in their diet, and I'll show you up here. You can see it hanging down in the water, and there's a file fish hanging around it. That's a feeder box that I made, and it has egg crate on the bottom of it. So mm -hmm. when I use the, uh, I use brine for them because they suffer from a small mouth syndrome, and they bite the food and then tend to spit it back out, and then okay. usually the bigger fish are eating it, and then they'll starve to death for most people over you know a little bit of time. So what I did was. I put that in there so that when I put the frozen in there, I take it across the bottom of it so it's like a cheese grater. It shreds up the food into little bitty thin pieces, and now they don't spit it out. Um, I've had all five of them, and I've been waiting and waiting for them to uh, have one of them change into the uh, male. Um, they're all females uh, to the cyced, but I've had them for almost five years now, and not one of them has changed. Well, I guess I that... Did, I did put in a cyced and they killed it within 24 hours. Oh, wow. Well, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I think I'm going to have to add uh, one or two of those to my tank because I definitely like those fish, and usually that's what happens to me. I see somebody else's tank like yours, and I get a little jelly and got to gotta get one of whatever they have. So I think that might be, that might be on, on tap for me. Um, let's see here. Let's see if there's another question before we turn this thing Turn this thing down. Okay. Somebody, oh, Joe asked, what were you going to say about the fans in your sump? I don't know if you got cut off by me or what. Um, those fans will save your life. Um, mm -hmm. it, keeps the, it keeps the system regulated. Um, I do have uh, one thing that I have to run. Um, I do have to run a uh, dehumidifier. Um, the system's evaporating about eight gallons a day. So I do run a dehumidifier so that it doesn't affect the woodwork in the house, the kitchen cabinets, and other things. Right. Wow, that's crazy. That's nice. Well, beautiful system, Matt. You know, I'm, I'm really, you know, grateful that uh, you came on, spent an hour with us to share it with everybody. Um, lots of people are, are just loving your tank. Cody's like, great system. Thanks for sharing. Lots of, lots of positivity, which is what I love to see. And, uh, you know, want to tell people, too, you know, if you're going to... Uh, let me go back to the widescreen here while I'm talking this up. If uh, 
if you're going to, if, you, if you've got a great reef out there, uh, if you've got stuff to share, ideas that you're doing on, uh, on your Apex gear, um, you know, send me, a, send me a note, Terrence at NeptuneSystems.com. Say, hey, I'd love to be on uh, Let's Talk Reef uh, or um, Control Freak Wednesday <laughs> um, uh, and uh, show off what you got because I, I know everybody really appreciates it. You don't have to worry about being judged. Um, that's what we're all here to do is have a good time and, and share ideas and, uh, and, and really enjoy this hobby that we have all together. And uh, I hope that this program helps people do that. So tell your friends about it too. Share the, the program. Uh, even after we close down here, go ahead and share the recorded version of it and let people know when it, uh, when it comes on. And uh, Matt, are we going to see you in Chicago? I am not going to be in Chicago. I wish I was going to be in Chicago. I'm going to be at our local uh, frag swap. They ended up, they came on the same days. Um, I wish I was going to be there. Um, I plan on it next year, and obviously I'll be uh, at the Reef of Palooza here in Orlando and New York, um, but I won't be in Chicago. So let's, let's put the camera back on you so we can sign off and actually sure. see you, man. And uh, Okay, so you're not going to be in Chicago. We're going to be there. Obviously, Neptune Systems is the first Reef of Palooza in Chicago. Uh, that the guys are putting on. We're going to be there. I leave on Friday. I hope all of you guys that are in the Chicago area come out to the event, see us. Uh, if you're already a, you know, a control freak and have an Apex, come talk about it. You want to see uh, the Trident in action, come see it. Uh, if you're not an Apex user already, come out. We'll demo anything you want. You can try anything out that you like, and um, you can talk to all the experts with our gear. So come see us there. Uh, next week, we've got uh, Let's Talk Reef on Tuesday at 5. I don't know why I drew a blank earlier. I couldn't remember when Let's Talk Reef was. I, that's nuts. Um, but uh, that'll be next week on Tuesday at 5 o'clock, same bat channel. And uh, then, obviously, two weeks from today, we'll have another Control Freak Wednesday. And I don't have somebody lined up yet. I have a couple of people, I think, maybe. But, if you, again, if you want to be on it, send me some info, and we'll do it. How'd you like it there, Matt? Did you enjoy this? Oh, I did, definitely. It's always great to uh, see things. It kind of reminds me of um, our local club here has a tank hop where we'll mm -hmm. go and see different systems. And this is kind of the same thing. So yeah. when you had spoken and asked about, you know, if I would be interested, I said, you know, obviously let, let's share as much as we can with each other. Awesome, awesome. Well, I, I really appreciate it. Neptune Systems appreciates it. Uh, again, there's a recording of it, so if you want to show it off to anybody later on, feel free to share it around. And uh, until next week, well, let's talk Reef on Tuesday at 5. That's it for uh, Control Freak Wednesday. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks, Matt, again. And uh, sure. we'll see you next time.